Hello again everyone, Brett Beck, Altitude Scale Modeling with another big kit review. I love Japanese aircraft because they always look so beat up, so weathered, so stained, so wore out, and so good looking. This is the newest 30 second scale kit from Zukimura, and you know what that means. Loads of detail. I like the choice of subject matter. The, uh... Big old Kawasaki Ki-45 Toru or Nick as we say it in America. Beautiful box art. On this side, you got a couple pictures of it built up. A whole bunch of stuff in Japanese, some stuff in English. If you want to pause it and read it. Sorry, didn't hold that very long. Pause it and read it. Uh, nothing on the ends. Oops, sorry. And some more pictures of it built up. Of course, it's going to have great engine detail, great interior detail, great underneath, landing gear bay detail, which you're not going to see very much of it at all. That's one of the things that people complain about. So, I'm going to open up this great big monster box. So, get a few things out of the way over here. That's poor flaming on my part. <sighs> Alright, so, top of the box comes off. And we've got a top opening flip box loaded with plastic. So, one, two, three, four, five. And we've got some clear parts. We'll look at all of this. Let's get it all out of here. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. About twenty-one screws. The instruction manual, which also going to have the decals in it, which we'll look at at the end. Set that down there so we can put all the sprues in. Bring the camera back down. Turn on the extra light. When you got a box that big, you have to make adjustments. Alright. So. We've got matching sprues, clear and not clear. Now I'll look at, I'm not going to look at all the clear sprues. We'll look at one or two. But you have a choice. Obviously you can do half clear, all clear, none clear. Typical, wonderfully detailed and handled Tsukimura plastic. Like a tiny little bit of flash right there. Hmm. All right, inside lots of framing detail, of course, because you can show the inside. There are some injector pin marks in various spots, which I'm not sure if you have to clean up or not. Some more in here, some more in here. Some people say Zukimura kits are too complicated for their own good. Some love them. I love the idea of the detail. I've not built one yet. This probably will be the first one I build. Just because, like I said, I love the way the Japanese aircraft can be weathered. So there you go. And on this one, we will look at the clear parts. So, some are more clear than others. You'll be able to see kind of the hazy detail. It's going to miss you 34 weapon set through the clear parts. 
so you can see it's going to be cloudy. You push it up against it, you can see a little better. But it's the same level of detail on both sides, the same ejector pins on both sides, because you know what? It's the same mold. Just one has clear plastic, one doesn't. So again, like the Lancaster, is it a gimmick or is it something you'll want to do? These are the two sprues of the engine they sell us. Clear, unclear, we're not going to look at that one. We'll look at this one. Again, nice panel line detail. Really, really nice rivet detail. I mean, for the first time me saying it, this might not be big enough rivet detail. Usually rivet detail is overblown. But you look at rivet detail on those panels, it might not be deep enough. You might need to run a Rosie the Riveter over it, open it up like how that's open. Detail inside of those. And we keep going, we got more engine cooler parts. And the doors. See there's rivet detail inside the doors too. And again some ejector pin marks and some of the engine panels. Venting. None on here or here. There is some on these parts here, as you'll see. Let's see what I'm talking about on these doors. Again, really nice rivet detail. And ejector pins. Some manufacturers manage to get rid of them, some don't. If you have all the panels closed, it won't matter. If you have to have them open, you may need to take care of them. All right, we've got wings, we've got clearing wings. We will look at the clear wings, just because they're such big parts. But first, we'll look at the gray plastic wings. As far as I can tell, all the rivet detail is where it should be. The plastic is really nice. Access hatches. You've got workable flaps, positionable flaps and ailerons. Nice touch. Again, detail inside of where the flaps are going to go. Again, ejector pin marks. Super Wing Series number 13, sprue B. Their sprue letters are big enough. And there's where it says Super Wing Series number 13. Because they do take their time on kits, so every a couple of year. So, there's the detail. You can see a couple of ejector pin marks in there. But all these on here feel flush. But run over with a sander won't make it be too bad. There's all that fine rivet panel line detail. engine they cells are going to hang. There you go. And like I said, we'll look at the clear wing one. So that sprue number I gave you it obviously has matching clear sprues. Again, these are the same molds. So they got the same detail, same level of clarity, their parts up against there is fine. You know, I don't know what you're going to see inside the wings anyway, except the fuel tanks. Because I'm assuming the fuel tanks are in the wings. Easier to see the ejection pin marks on clear parts. And clear nose cone 
engine covers, looks like under part of the fuselage, clear, not clear. Nose gun looks really well done. There's a cannon that goes out the front of the nose. Venting, the riveting, a couple more cowling covers. I think there's two different versions in this kit. Here it says long nose. I'm not sure if that's because there's another version or if there's two versions in here. We will find out. But again, nose has got great detail inside these panels. There's no ejector pin marks. There's a few inside these covers here. And a few inside the opening for the engine parts. So these are closed, obviously. Actually, this one might be open. They both might be open. I could be wrong. Nice rivet detail on the nose. Nice access panel and rivet detail. Same on the other side. Looks really good in there. The tip of it is shaped really nice. There is no... I want to make sure. And there might be a seam line on there or it's a panel line. Not sure. Check your references. Could be a seam line all the way around because it runs through the pen line on top. So that I need a little bit of cleanup. Ooh, we may have reached the end of the clear parts. Nope, we got this one or this one. So the clear tail sections. Elevators, it's actually a clear instrument panel as well. Elevators, horizontal stabilizers, whatever you prefer to call them. And a really nice instrument panel. Really nice, you punch out the decals for there and you cover it with a drop of crystal clear or clear gloss. Make it look like glass. So again, good access hatch, good rivets, good panel lines. Just keep going on and on because quality of plastic's good. They really put a lot of thought in it. There's a nice detailed instrument panel. Flip it over. You can see the structure inside of the parts. Again, that'll be mainly for the clear parts. Because once these are closed up, there's no reason to open them and see the inside. Oops. Drop that one right down. All right, here's your wing spar, props, bulkheads, another instrument panel. This one with dials in it. It's a long sprue. This sprue is as long as the box. So your wing spar with your proper dihedral, I guess. I was getting mixed up. As you can see, it's got the nice angle you're going to need and it runs the whole length of the wings pretty much which is good seat belts headrests radio which is very finely detailed there's more seat belts on this seat instrument panel bulkheads props looks like the radio center console throttle so this does have a lot of detail on it Bulkheads, seats, seat back, seat belts. So I can oxygen zones or radio, more seat belts, seats. There's a radio, that looks like the throttles to me. Side panel. Props don't have any flash. There's some more of the side panels. A couple of bulkheads. I'm guessing that's a fuel tank. There's the other instrument panel. This one has the dial faces in it, so you can do a lot of dry brushing. And the other side 
details underneath the spar for landing your bays, I'm guessing. Um, details on the back of the bulkheads, including the, where the ejector pin marks are, side panels. Instrument panel, you can drill those out and run some wiring, because you've got your whole plate there where all the dials are set in. Here's your seat detail. Very nice detail on all that. Very interior parts. Some more. Looks like an engine exhausts. Maybe another radio. I'm guessing this is where the engine mounts to. These look like machine gun sides of machine guns. These are the barrels of the machine guns that are hollowed out nicely. Exhaust tips are hollowed out a little bit. Uh, this looks like a radio or a panel of something with good rivet detail. Let's start with the rivet detail on those. Very good. Machine gun parts, halves, two halves that you put together, then your barrels hollowed out. Good for the cooling jackets too. Nice recessed detail there. Exhaust tips, hollowed out a little bit. You might want to do a little more, just stick a black wash in there. Same on the ones on this side. There is... I don't see any seam lines on the sides of anything. Here's the sides of the guns. And the sides of the exhaust. No burring seam lines or anything of the sort. There's another little control box or three. And Looks like some more bulkheads, fuel tanks, parts I'm not sure what they are. These probably external drop tanks maybe. Some more paneling. I think these maybe wheel covers. Fuel tank like I said. Like sway bars for those. Two fuel tanks. So there's another bulkhead. Fuel tanks. Various parts, not sure. Another bulkhead. Those could or could not be the wheel covers, depending on how many wheels it has. And fuel tanks, because they don't look like bombs. There's even rivet detail on the back side of this bulkhead. And this bulkhead. Alright. Now we have some engine parts. Sorry, I needed a drink. Oh, my God, you do those. All right, cylinder heads. Uh, looks like some more radio stuff. I mean, that looks like a carb or four barrel carburetor. Cylinder heads, we know it's not, but it looks like one. Radios, wire leads. Cylinder heads go together, there's pistons inside the cylinders. At least you don't have to put them in, they're already in. So, here's your pistons inside both cylinders. Other than that, the detail on this side, there's not much of it. See the angle on those parts. Here's your cylinder head detail. Take a wash nice. Some more radios. Like I said, looks like a four-bell carburetor, though we know it's not. And some of the engine parts. I bet we got more. We do. Matching sprue. Open that one. This has got a floor. 
those parts that I thought were where you mounted the engines, there's two more of them, and there's not four engines on this, so I could be wrong. Gun magazines. Oxygen tanks, I'm guessing. Uh, another fuel tank. Another parts to the engine. That looks like another part of a machine gun. This is the cannon. There's the barrel of the cannon. There's the cannon itself. And I'm not sure where that goes to. There's your tanks. One piece tanks. Magazines. More bulkhead parts. There's your flooring for your cockpit. Your bays. There's the underneath of the flooring. Alright, and then we got here we're getting close to the end. I'm guessing those are engine mounts and wheels. Wheels that I do not see any weight on. Hosing, very fine, delicate hosing. Landing gear, struts, engine mounts, bulkheads, oil tank, or maybe gotta be oil tank. Too small for fuel tanks. Or these are oil tanks, and these are fuel tanks. I have to see the directions say. But lots of hoses, lots of delicate parts, landing gear. Again, no weight on wheels, which is a shame. But there's a tread pattern. I don't see any burring or seam lines on the landing gear parts. And again, you have these tiny little parts to be careful of. Your engine mounts. This bag's a double. Take it over there. Take it over there. Start on this side. It's various little parts, control surfaces, knobs and switches for the instrument panel, maybe pitot tubes, maybe hatch covers maybe. Small, good detail. And then the one that's on the other side. A couple more, at least one more bulkhead frame. The tail wheel parts. So these are tail wheel parts. Tail wheel is a single piece. Again, no weight on it. It does have a center seam. Which you'll need to clean up, but you'll well know weather it and wear it down anyway. And probably put some weight on it. Oh, another bag with doubles. This one's side by side. Let's start here. Another oxygen tank. Like some more radio parts, definitely control box parts, throttles, some more gun magazines, lots of throttles, control sticks, everything else on this one. See the detail in the box faces. All those little parts and all the throttles, the gun magazines, all that. All that and you do the bides. Another machine gun, two more machine guns. And they're mounting some more magazines. Looks like these are on movable parts. Looks like some more throttles, a gun sight. 
these guns well this one's drilled out this one is too even those tiny gun barrels there are hollowed out this is a kit that if I start is going to be a long term build not one of those that you rush through of course this is the last bag of screw parts and I'm not going to open it because this has got really small delicate parts in it look at that I don't want to risk damaging them because those are really delicate tiny parts in there and I'm guessing that's a control wire for inside the wing so leave those as they are and we've got some clear parts these remember that one screw right here this one has got clear matching parts to it I don't know why but it does maybe it's some lights but then why'd they make the one that's not clear I don't know but here's the real clear parts and there's some amazing clarity on those nice raised framing so you can mask it yourself the clarity on these clear parts is just outstanding and there is no seam line on those you see right through it very little distortion even though a lot of them are complex curves yowza put those right back in the bag all right that's it for the parts Parts is parts. And we got us an instruction manual. Get a taped bag. And of course the decals should be in here. And then there's something else. Die cut mask set. And it feels vinyl. It doesn't feel like the Tamiya tape type mask sets. But it is die cut. I don't know how it's going to show, but it is. Decals by Cartograph. Enough said. So, instrument panel. And for the. I mean, I guess you could use it on either. But I would punch and cut these out and put them in the one that didn't have faces already. That's what I would do. These big white areas, I'd probably paint. Same with the yellow areas. But they feel great. They look great. I'd probably paint the... Whatever the technical term is for the Japanese insignia. Love the nose art. So you must have two different kinds because there's two different nose arts. A little bit of stencil data. Again, these are really glossy as you can tell. But they're beautiful. And Zuki Mora's world renowned instruction manuals. They look Zuki Mora and Wingnut Wings. They've got the instruction manual down to an art form. Japanese English. This is, uh, I'm guessing, CAD drawings of the actual parts. Your upward firing machine guns or cannons, and then your front cannon. Here, if you want to read about the aircraft. Table of context. It smells like a brand new book. All you want to know about it, old-fashioned style, paintings, parts list, again, little table of contents, A and B type. So there are two types in here. The, doesn't really say this is, this one is the 
TIE Atari Special Attack aircraft, which is I think the one that rammed B-29s after it couldn't, it's cannon. And whichever version this is, I'm going to be doing this one because I love the camo. Here's the breakdown of the build sections. Again, another table of contact. It is calling out for Vallejo colors. I'm sure we'll all pick our own paint color. Here's an exploded part, how to put all the engine together. And then pictures of the engines together, A option, B option. So two different options, obviously. Just make sure you know which one you want to do. A, B, C. So these are all three one for building the engine. So this actually isn't the instructions on how to do it. It's just an exploded diagram of the engines. Now you're getting in the instructions on the engine builds and painting. And these are colors, so you can see what color to paint them. So 3-1 is all about the engine, then make sure you got your A or your B option. Still doing engine parts because we're still in 3-1. Again, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. Just pay attention to all of that. Maybe go through and mark it how you want it. Again, engine. It does talk about different parts you're doing. Carburetor right, carburetor left, engine mounts, right and left, auxiliary equipment. And then you're finished with your engine when you decide which version you want. There is a stand in here for showing the engine. I didn't realize that. It's if you take these parts off of this sprue right here. The E-Runner. Where is my E-Runner? And then I opened this is it. Nope. E runner. So there you go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Didn't even notice that when I was looking at it. There's the one part of the stand. There's all the bracing for the stand. So there you go. That's pretty clever. I know one company, Tacom maybe, puts or Mang, puts rivets on their sprues. That's pretty cool. So you can display an engine. So you can build and display one. Here's the exploded part, putting the interior together. And then actual pictures of the interior put together, A or B. Starting with the floor, you have a fuel tank, you've got wing sparred, bulkheads, more color pictures, doing all this interior stuff that, depending on if you use clear or not clear, you're not going to see these painting guides are really nice and handy. Wish more people would do that. So your throttle controls, your control stick and how to paint it, so you got a little switch for the switching to guns. Two instrument panel options, the one without the gauges, the one with the gauges, there's the decals and it says use the clear decals for one without the gauges because you're going to color the backing okay but you can do what you want or I'm sure there'll be an Edward one you can add or a Zukimura one because they also do photo etch for their kits more for the interior, more color call outs, more AB not attach the rear seat for B you do for A. Not attaching the rear seat bulkhead for B. And then you go to putting fuselage halves together. These are all the parts used in this chapter. It doesn't say It does tell you to test fit your parts right there, which is a nice touch. It doesn't say anything about clear or not clear parts. I'm sure that's up to your personal preference. Again, lots of color. Left side overview, right side. Empty cartridge collection box. That's what that one box was that I wasn't sure. 
tail wheels go and paint the whole inside silver pretty much at least the parts that aren't occupied the parts that are occupied here it says you can choose between gray or clear parts so it does tell you good front view good rear view so you can get your angles right throwing the top on make sure you test fit so you can check for your seams there she is all put together on her wheels. Fortunately you can add the wheels last for painting. Fuel tanks going in the wings because you're in the wings now as you can tell. And the landing gear. You can put the struts in, put the wheels on. Let's see. Fuel tanks, swing halves going together. There's storage in the, these are storage compartments in the uh, landing gear bays. So wings are together now and then you put the landing gear in. So you can put the landing gear struts and everything on after the wings are together. Lots and lots of detail, lots of reading ahead in these instructions. There's some more of your clear parts for the tail and the elevators if you choose to go that way. Right side assembly, left side assembly, pay attention to A or B, look at your color pictures you got in here. Very nice. They've got all these color pictures. And front view, side view. All the little parts going on. Assembly of the doors. exact attachment point positions again the right angle so approximately five degrees approximately 80 degrees final outfitting of all the exterior parts and then the nose for the late production so the cannon doesn't go in the special attack one which is the ramming one Cannon goes in the late production one. So you need to decide that. All your struts, your props, your flaps, your ailerons, then your canopies. Showing the exact attachment points. Masking again so you can choose between clear and not clear. This is gray gray or clear. Keep putting on small parts. Cut the parts you don't need. Fuel tanks, right? Yep, fuel tanks. And there's your color callouts. 53rd Flight Regiment, 3rd Squadron. That was a tail marking, not a nose marking. I was wrong about that. And again, I would paint that white and possibly the red too, but the white for sure. And then here's the one special attack aircraft. There's how you use your masking stencils. There's the sheet. There's masking. There's your sprue layout. There's who you write to if something breaks and you need a part. There you go. There you have it. This beautiful Zukimora 132nd Kai Tai. What was it called again? Nick. Yep. Toru. Nick. So, beautiful Japanese green that you can weather nicely with silver underneath of it, or the unique camouflage one. Which one will you choose? Thanks for watching the sprue review of this beautiful new kit that just came out from Zukimora. Go out and add one to your stash. Until then, sit your ass in your seat and start building a model.